We begin tonight with the latest on the Davenport building collapse. The city of Davenport says as of tonight, three people remain missing. Brandon Colvin, Ryan Hitchcock and Daniel Preen. Their apartments were located in the collapsed part of the building. The timeline for demolition remains unknown. City of Davenport released nearly 100 documents last night in connection with the collapsed building. Some date back to 2020. Included are notices to vacate specific units, structural reports, and fire code failures, among other things. News 8's Joe McCoy is live for us in downtown Davenport to break this all down for us. Joe, what have you learned from those reports? John, well, there was a ton to sift through in these reports right here, but there were some very eye-opening information on the extremely poor condition of the building before it collapsed. More than 90 different reports released, some with pictures on the condition of the apartment building before it collapsed. City officials addressing the community again today. Good morning, thanks for coming. News 8 has gone through the documents line by line and found some interesting details. On February 2nd, Davenport Development and Neighborhood Services released a report saying in part, quote, part of the southwest wall has been gradually failing. There's visible crumbling of this exterior load-bearing wall under the support beam. To continue to use the building, you must provide an engineer's letter stating this is not an imminent danger. Select Structural, the engineering company hired by building owner Andrew Wold, conducted an emergency site visit the same day and concluded, quote, an evacuation or lockout of the building is not necessary at this time. You were toting such a fine line between closing the building and keeping the building open. And based off one engineer's report, you decided to keep the building open. And now most likely three people have died because of that. And I, I understand that. I mean, a, a professional engineer in February say that the building was not at imminent collapse. The same engineer reviewed the repair work that needed to be done in May and did not come to the conclusion that that building had to be evacuated. Less than a week before the building collapsed, another report was conducted. In a report from May 24th from Select Structural, which was five days before the building collapsed, it says, in anticipation of these areas falling, the brick facade above the window should be secured. This is to keep the entire face of the building from falling away from bottom areas that come loose. Did that not cause you guys to pause and say that no one should live in this building? They're still investigating that. Um, if you look at the January report, it was a similar repair that was made back in January. So um, they're still looking at that and, and we'll get those answers. Believe me, the investigation, we're as interested as anybody else. An investigation that right now has many more questions than answers. Mayor Mike Matson continues to emphasize the fluidity of this investigation, as well as the city's commitment to get to the bottom of how this tragedy happened. But currently, community members are still frustrated that the city waited for the building to collapse before deeming it unlivable. John. All right, thank you, Joe. This is 49-year-old Laverne Clark. He was arrested for trespassing and harassment. You can see him yelling in handcuffs while officers walk him away from the collapse. He was released later on a $600 bond. Davenport City crews are moving the barriers around the collapsed apartment building. This is the latest effort to keep everyone safe from the possibility of a larger collapse. Instead of limiting traffic on Harrison, they are reopening two lanes of traffic. This is the first time in a couple of days now the intersection has been fully open to traffic. Davenport officials, meanwhile, are trying to figure out what to do next. News 8's Cesar Sanchez continues our team coverage tonight with details on the city's recovery plan. Good evening, Cesar. Yeah, good evening, John. It's been a four days now since the Davenport building collapsed, and the emotions are still high around here, especially among the people who have been out here for days waiting for an answer from the city. And it's making it more difficult for them to make a decision that is uh, ideal for all those involved. Now, during the press conference today, Mayor Mike Matson said this has become a recovery situation. A new missing person has been identified as Daniel Preen, joining alongside Brandon Colvin and Brian Hitchcock, who have been missing since Sunday. And the city says it's, it's been a nonstop search effort to find them. We have had teams of multiple jurisdictions, from our folks, to state folks, to the state search and rescue, to the Mabus folks, in that building numerous times. We have had infrared canines in that building numerous times. 
I can't explain to you enough, and I'm sure it won't be enough, but the amount of caring by our first responders to get in that building and try and save lives and find folks, I don't know if it's unheralded. Now, before going on air, I was just handed this flyer with, the th with pictures of the three missing people. And earlier all this week as well, the city said there were two other people unaccounted for, but they have been found, one of them located here in Davenport, the other one in Texas. And John, one thing I want to add before I let you go, uh, we spoke with Chief Blado not too long ago, and he asked us if we had masks in our cars because they're worried that this building can come down at any point. And that just shows all of us the seriousness of the situation. John, back to you. All right, incredible, Caesar. The city of Davenport says it is monitoring the situation to determine next steps. Again, there is no timeline on when demolition will begin. The city of Davenport is giving $6,000 in aid to each household displaced from the collapsed building. Households in adjacent buildings can get up to $1,000. The city is also offering $25,000 to businesses that were in the building and $5,000 for businesses in adjacent buildings. We know what the intent is, but we want to make it as flexible as possible so you can spend it on rent, clothing, food, anything you need. In City Council ratification of this next week, we're mobilizing now, anticipating that so that maybe by later next week we'll be able to start rolling out some of the assistance. Now you can apply for aid at a Saturday event hosted by the Red Cross. It will be at the downtown Davenport YMCA from 10 to 4. A candlelight vigil has been set up for those still missing from the collapsed building. Brandon Colvin's mother, Desiree Banks, says it's been an emotional week, especially since Brandon Jr. is graduating this Saturday and his dad is nowhere to be found. She also says the community has offered a lot of support. We need help and we got to get answers. So we have to. Whether we like the answers or don't like them, I have to get something. Something, because right now we're just in the point where we're just unsettled, like no matter which thought we go with anywhere, we have nothing to go by, but that we know he's in there, somebody's in there. Banks says she and Brandon Jr. will continue to be on site until they get word of what happened to his father. Now, if you would like to help those impacted by the collapse, you can text the word donate to the number on your screen. That's 309-304-0888. Make sure to text instead of calling that number. And we have expanded coverage of the building collapse on our website. You can see all of our stories, plus the latest information on the investigation at WQAD.com.